Good morning, my darlings. Gosh, am I really <laughs> starting the vlog looking like this? Yes, I am. It is a Saturday morning um, and I've got into a really good habit of getting up on the weekend days at a very similar time to my weekdays. I think I mentioned this last week. I was listening to a a productivity podcast um, while I was doing my wardrobe clear out and they were saying that one of the ways to maintain your energy levels especially when the days start to get shorter in winter is by actually keeping your sleeping hours as similar as possible no matter what day of the week it is so I'm trying to not not that I ever really did but not have like a major lion on the weekends a lion for me would be like 7 <laughs> 30 a.m or 8 a.m but by maintaining getting up at around six-ish on weekend days it just kind of helps you to stay in the same body clock so i have been awake for a couple of hours this morning i'm not putting any makeup on um for the whole morning because i'm actually i'm having a bit of a pamper morning i'm having a bit of a pamper few days actually so i'm picking this vlog up straight after the end of the last one which was when i went to michael van clark last night um for i had my hair trimmed and i had my nails done i cannot tell you how much like Kim Kardashian I felt during that treatment because it is just so lovely being fully pampered. I was having, even to the extent that, so while Lam Fan was doing um, the initial dry trim, because at Michael Van Clark they trim your hair um, when it's dry as well as when it's wet, they've got an amazing technique there, could not recommend that salon any more highly. Um, so while I had the dry trim, I was having the nail prep done, so I was having my old gel taken off. While I was in the basin having my hair washed, she was taking the foils off and doing like the filing and the buffing. And then when I was having the wet trim and the blow dry, I was doing the under the lamp bit. And I, and I don't know if he meant to do this or not, but hair and nails literally finished within 10 seconds of each other. The timing could not have been any more perfect. I couldn't believe it. I was like, did you guys plan that? It was so perfect. And for someone that loves multitasking, it was just, just the best. So today, to continue on with that pampering, I'm trying out a new local lady called Rosie. She lives about 10 minutes from us here. Um, and I just, I do love local treatments. I love to know where is great for local treatments as well as my kind of usual London places and Rosie does brow lamination and LVL lash lift. I've never had brow lamination before so I'm really really looking forward to it because I have to brush my brows um, every single day. <laughs> I have to like shape my brows all the time. Hopefully brow lamination will work for me. So because she likes her cl clients to come with no makeup on, I'm just having a lovely pamper this morning. I'm starting right now with the Aurelia Refine and Polish Double Exfoliation Mask. I particularly love this one because as you probably can't see, but it's got little um, granules in it, which give you that manual exfoliation. But then it's also got, I think it's maple enzyme. It's got AHAs, which give you that, what do you call it? like the kind of acidy nibbly away at your dead skin cells kind of exfoliation and that double whammy once a week i would say sometimes twice a week depending on your skin because i use active ingredients in the evening i just like to do it once a week and use something a little bit more gentle which i find this is but really great especially like yesterday i had a day in the city just to pull all the dirt out of your skin and really freshen up your complexion so i'm just doing the circular movement massage part of the treatment and then in five minutes time i will add a little bit of water to this to make it go all milky um and also the fruit enzymes in here are just giving me that lovely glow so what else do i have to report um i remember last time i featured these pajamas in uh, on a youtube video it was when i was chatting about the film that charlie and i watched had a lot of questions on them didn't link them because i'm pretty sure they are sadly out of stock they are from olivia von hal i think i got these on netta porter i have to say though olivia von hal have put their prices up so much and i just don't know if i could justify them anymore they are so expensive pajamas just they would be the most amazing christmas gift um but so expensive <laughs> ridiculous so today after i go and see rosie for brows and lashes i might pop to the morton fossway garden center because i've heard from my mum <laughs> that they've got a really good selection of baubles and that they are half the price of 
Burford Garden Company, um, which I love. <laughs> Burford Garden Company is like the Harrods of garden centres, but Morton is much closer, and if the baubles are the same but cheaper, then obviously I would like to go there, but that depends on timing, um, because I do have something very exciting that I hope to unbox later this afternoon. And then at five o'clock we're meeting our friends Ben and Robin for a quick dinner, because at six o'clock, or like 6.30ish, we are heading back to Soho Farmhouse for their bonfire night. They set up fairground rides, um, they have loads of like fun cocktails and nibbles, and of course fireworks, because today is bonfire night. Remember, remember the 5th of November. So that is the plan for today, it should be a lovely day, and then tomorrow, Charlie and I are hosting, there's gonna be a group of six of us, and we're having a beef wellington Sunday roast, so that's gonna be amazing, I can't wait. So I'll go through um, our Sunday roast with you as well. But anyway, I think I've had this on for 10 minutes now, so I'm gonna rinse it off, and then continue with my pampering. Okay, very fresh face now, I have, well, I cleansed actually before I even did the mask with Aurelia's Miracle Cleanser. Everything that I'm using this morning, I'm just using my most comforting and calming products because I do sometimes find that my skin gets a bit sensitive when I have any kind of like facial treatments. So this is my absolute go-to. Now I always find after taking off a mask, my skin needs replenishing, rehydrating. And this is my little dream team, again, from Aurelia. This is the Probiotic Concentrate and the Revitalize and Glow Serum. The Probiotic Concentrate, you can um, obviously use it on its own or you can mix it in with other products. I'm a big fan of mixing together. Oh, I am running low on this serum. And it's the most anti-aging product in Aurelia's collection. Mm. I would say from the entire Aurelia range, this is definitely in my top three products, the Probiotic Concentrate. God, I look so luminescent stood here. It's because it's quite grey and cold looking outside, so I apologise for that. Um, yeah, this has got um, a very high concentrate of Aurelia's Protida Complex, which is just super anti-aging, super hydrating. It's got hyaluronic acid. It's so very powerful at tackling any kind of inflammation on the skin which is why I feel like it's going to be a really fantastic product especially for me with what I'm going to have done treatment wise later on today. Um, it boosts the hyaluronic acid levels in your skin and it also is very reparative so it really helps the skin to repair itself which is great because then it just leaves you with your most healthy and glowing complexion. Also fabulous for anti-aging. Also within my top three from Aurelia and the reason I tell you this is because they have the most insane Black Friday sale coming up, which is, I don't think I've ever even heard of a skincare brand doing a sale this good, but it is 40% off site-wide, <laughs> which is just absolutely insane. Um, but this is why I just love Aurelia so much. They have given me a discount code, which allows you guys to shop the 40% off before anybody else. So it's BF. Josie 40 and that gives you a two day head start on the Aurelia 40% off Black Friday sale and free shipping as well which is just so generous of them so I'll leave all of my favourites linked down below. My next favourite which I've got very carried away and started to apply already is their eye serum. I have spoken about this a lot a lot a lot because I find eye creams too heavy. The skin around my eye is my eyes is particularly delicate and sensitive so I just need something a little bit lighter. This has actually got Arnica in it which is so impactful at literally brightening the under eye area. This has also got the Shea Butter in there which is super duper hydrating and the Protida which is of course again hyaluronic acid and collagen for hydration which definitely helps with those little fine lines and again just super calming which is what I need for today. So if you were to treat yourself to my personal top three from Aurelia, eye serum, Protida concentrate and miracle cleanser, they would be my top three. But if it was top five, <laughs> I would also say Revitalizing Glow Serum. This is a, how many mil is this? This is only 15 mil. This has been lasting me for a long time. This is your gift with purchase um, if you use my discount code 
and spend, I think it's over £34. That's insane that you get one this big. <laughs> Trust me, it'll last you such a long time, especially if you mix it in with the probiotic concentrate, which I would highly recommend. And then the other thing in my top five would be their body body serum because again at this time of year i just feel like i want long lasting hydration on my skin sometimes i don't want to put on a full-on cream but i want to be super hydrated and the aurelia body serum is amazing so what an epic early um early discount for black friday this is it this is their biggest sale of the year it's not going to go up in discount anymore so if you did want that head start bf josie 40 40 percent off site-wide free shipping and free serum on orders over 34 pounds which is absolutely insane so what a dream um okay i'm gonna get dressed now and what am i gonna do i maybe actually might do a little bit of wrapping throughout november amongst all the cyber madness i also have to start thinking about our vlogmas intro video shoot which we are actually doing next week is it next week that's cyber week so today's the 13th oh no we've got a couple more weeks but you know what i feel like next week is gonna be cyber week part one and the week after is gonna be cyber week part two Either way, it's gonna get quite hectic in this neck of the woods. So we are starting to plan our Vlogmas video shoot and a scene that I've got in my head, I'll just tell you, no spoilers here, is filling our Defender with gifts. And it seems pointless filling it with fake gifts. So I'm gonna do some legit wrapping, get super ahead, middle of November. This is the most organized I have ever been. And then we can also use our gifts as props in the Defender for the shoot. So wouldn't it be magical if it snowed on the Vlogmas shoot day? That's not gonna happen because this is definitely the warmest bonfire night I think we've ever had. I remember last year I was wearing hat and gloves and it was blooming freezing, but this year I could probably go in a t-shirt and I would be okay. Anyway, enough rambling. I need to get dressed. I almost forgot, I will finish my morning skincare routine with the Aurelia Cell Revitalize Day Moisturizer. Now, I'm not sure if you can really tell, but this is a really unusual moisturizer in that the formula, it's kind of like a whipped consistency, so it feels almost like a mousse when you apply it on your skin. It is so gorgeous. Maybe takes a moment more to rub in, not rub in, like massage in, um, but then once it does, it is so heavenly feeling on the skin. Again, super hydrating, super calming, so perfect for this time of year. Oh, it's actually got aloe vera in it, probably why it is so calming on the skin. How old are we? We're sat here having our, our Saturday breakfast, reading, reading, well, reading magazines at least, we're not reading the newspaper. Yes, and in it they have got the rough guide to Dachshunds, and there's a Dachshund fact file in here, so I thought I'd read it to you. The only thing I would say is I'm disappointed that it's all short-haired. I love short-haired Dachshunds, but they're not the original. No. Long-haired are the original Dachshunds. Right, fact file. Dexter is livid. <laughs> fact file. The problem is, they couldn't actually afford my image rights fees. No. Even George Smith, you see, I love, I love George Smith, but they can only afford my brother's face. Oh, right. Daxon fact oh. file. Personality. Feisty, fun, and a little bit stubborn. Sounds like your mummy. Yeah. Sounds like your mummy. Like mummy like oh, son. Lovely. Exercise at least half an hour a day, twice that if on the lead. Mm. They get that, don't they? Background noise, oh. courtesy of Chicken Nugget. Lovely boy. Grooming, next oh. to none for short haired. Long head varieties need brushing three times a week. We don't get brushed three times a no, week. We're I, country dogs. I groom myself every day. Oh, such a good dog. Health, largely good but prone to back <clears throat> problems. Double daffles can have skin, hearing and eye problems. What's your brother um, like? Special skills, excellent nose and a powerful bark. When people turn up at our house and they hear the bark, they think we've got great dames. Yeah, you, they are actually very good guard dogs. Yes. Lifespan, 12 to 16 years. Unless you are Dexter and Dickens, in which case, you no. live forever. They're going to be in for a long time. You will live forever. Do you think that's mostly accurate? 
Well, at least me sitting on it now. You're going to be around forever, my boy. The thing is, Mum, I only really shop at Dalesford and I meditate and do yoga every morning. I so only I will eat be organic. living till I'm 20. Best gifts for Dax and donors. I think we have all of those things already. Well, let's give let's give Dickens a little bit of bacon because he is in a stop. Bacon is good for me. Lashes and brows are done. Made it to the Fossway Garden Centre. I'll show you brows when we get home. I've already spotted this lovely area of very festive crockery. We're going to have a little look around. Lots of lovely gift ideas. This would make a great gardener's gift to keep your seeds in the tin after you've eaten the cookies. This looks like male fenella. And the owl look. He's cute. Sorry. This would be the section where Freddie would get her baubles from. Her pink tree. Look, he's a real baby. These gingerbread charms have inspired me. I'm going to look out for some templates online so I can make a gingerbread defender this year. 2020 I made a gingerbread version of our house. Didn't make anything out of gingerbread last year, but this year I think I'm ready for the challenge. Gingerbread defender. 2022. Hello again my darlings, made it back home with significantly improved eyebrows. They are quite dark for me, I always think it just takes me like a day or so to get used to it. And also the first day that you, I've never had brow lamination done before, um, I didn't really think that that much would be hugely visibly different, but what I didn't know is that it's, they're kind of I don't know how to explain it, almost like permed into place. Almost like the LVL where they break down the bond, position the hairs and then re-put the bond back in. And also shaped and also dyed. I think, I think it's the dye that's making them look quite harsh on my face. But the shape of them is absolutely amazing. I have to say it looks a lot better in real life <laughs> than it's coming across on camera. Really, really pleased with it. Um, and then at the same time, I'm loving the multi multitasking treatments at the moment. At the same time, I had an LVL <laughs> lash lift. Always quite hard to show you on camera. I'm gonna quickly make myself some lunch and then we're gonna do a little bit of tidying. We've just got those like weekend jobs that we need to do and then get ready for the fireworks. Okay, so Charlie just told me that we're actually not eating dinner until after the fireworks, so I have taken that as my cue to make a very quick mac and cheese. I feel like I've shared this so many times on YouTube, but I have noticed a lot more questions cropping up on what my macaroni cheese recipe is. So I'm guessing you're new here if you've not seen me making a macaroni cheese before, so I will very quickly whiz through it. But how funny is this? So I was just checking the Soho House app to see what time we needed to be there later. And I noticed that on the homepage, it was um, their macaroni cheese recipe. So I just clicked on it thinking, oh, I wonder how they make theirs, is it any different to mine? And I cannot believe it, but it is the exact same recipe. Literally, my exact recipe is the Soho House recipe. I know for sure that when I make it, and if you were to follow this recipe, it doesn't taste the same as the macaroni cheese that you have in Soho House. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more nutmeg in theirs. Um, and I think they use different cheeses, but yeah, I'm gonna insert a screenshot of this because it's, some people prefer to, you know, see an, oh, do you know what, actually I'll leave a link to this um, if I can, because it's on the Soho House app. I'll leave a link to this in the description box down below because probably easier for you to follow this and follow my recipe. But what I would say, obviously macaroni is the traditional pasta, but I personally prefer rigatoni because I like to get more cheese stuck inside my little pasta bits. Um, I would also say that a good quality cheddar is absolutely essential. At the moment, we just love the Dalesford one, unsurprisingly. Um, it's just got a really nutty taste to it scrumptious and my secret not so secret ingredient that I add to my macaroni and cheese is Coleman's English mustard it not only gives it this really deep yellow color which I find so satisfying but just gives it a real kick which really cuts through the cheesiness um, so yeah I'm gonna start by melting some butter in a pan 
add some plain flour, and then I'll add some milk to make a, what do you call it, bechamel. Then I'll add my cheddar, take it off the heat, then I'll add my parmesan, just a little bit of parmesan, a good healthy spoonful of mustard, and then bake. Something else I would say is that in the amount of time it takes your pasta to cook, you can make the cheese sauce. So even if you're really hungry and you think, oh, I can't be bothered to make a mac and cheese, just know that the only time longer that mac and cheese takes is the time that it's browning up in the oven, which is the time that I personally do my washing up. So once you've finished eating your macaroni cheese, you can just sit back and know that there's no washing up left to do, which is amazing. So there's my butter in the pan and then once that's melted I will add in some plain flour and now I'm going to grate a little bit of cheddar in the Thermomix okay the butter has melted so I'm gonna add in about a heaped tablespoon of flour and then I'm going to start adding some whole milk Please excuse the filthy state of the agar. So the trick is to add the milk little by little so that you can keep ensuring that this is a smooth and lump-free paste. It takes a few moments to get it smooth. I'm just gonna add some pepper. Done. I would normally do more actually, more cheddar, but I actually only want a small mac and cheese today because it's quite a late lunch and I think there'll be snacks later. Stir that all in together. I would take your pasta off the heat when it's al dente, it's got a bit of a crunch. Perfect. And if this gets a little bit thick, don't stress. Just add some more milk in and a heaped tablespoon of mustard and then just stir this up quite sorry chickens burping in the background um, until all of that cheddar melts down and then add some of your parmesan not all of it about half and then once you've got it to a good consistency like this I would actually do a little taste test with the pasta that you've just drained. Partly because my mouth is watering so much, I just need to snack on something. Mm. Oh, that is so perfect. Okay, actually a little more mustard. Now I'm adding my macaroni to a shallow baking dish. We have put a lot of our crockery bits on the home gift guide, by the way, over on the blog. One final stir, add your sauce. Some people add the macaroni to this bowl. I personally cut out that step, just stir it a little bit as it goes in. And now finish with some pepper. If you happen to have some breadcrumbs, that is the piece de resistance, but make sure you add some more par parmesan on top you could also add um, dollops of cranberry, cranberry sauce if it's that time of year. You can add crushed nuts. And then this is gonna go in the hottest agar, which is around 180 to 200 degrees for about 10 minutes while I do my washing up. Quick change of jumper and cozier coats and Charlie and I are heading out to the fireworks. This is my Stan Studio coat that I've had for a couple of years now and a jumper from France's stories that I forgot that I had until I did my last clear out. Same Lululemon leggings. Lululemon. Lululemon. I used to think it was Lululemon. If you are very posh and French, my Brunello Cuccinelli boots and two sausage dogs that you're going to spend tonight with their granny. Come on then, little waggy taters.
Thank you very much. A sweet. Don't need felt about do sweets, mate. It was a perfect shape at the start, yeah? Has it collapsed in on itself? Ah! Made it to the farm with my darling and look at the mouth. Oh my goodness. You're the most stylish pregnant I don't lady. I fit in my maternity anymore. I can't believe they make maternity parka coats. <laughs> she is so glowing. And how cute is that that someone spotted you in Delson? They're like, she was glowing. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so cute. Oh, we're going to make it our tradition to get our little mirror selfies here every year. And next year, we'll have two little boys with us. Yay. Thanks, lady. Yeah, that is a whole... Well, it certainly feels like a very wintry morning. I think we might have a nice day later, but it's a little bit misty. Looks like there's been a little bit of a frost. Hopefully, we might be able to find some apples. Gosh, don't these just look absolutely <clears throat> delicious for the first time ever? I'm going to harvest some fruit from our crabapple archway. Okay, apples are freshly picked from the garden. Well, these two are. This one I actually picked up from Rosie's garden after my lash appointment yesterday, with her permission, obviously. It just looked so juicy on her tree. Um, so, my first job is to peel and cut up these. I think three should be a good amount there's six of us later and then i'm going to pop the probably about you know walnut sized chunks into the baking dish and then i'll add my frozen um black currants and then we will add our black cinnamon breeze. frozen blackberries and then we will add our cinnamon sugar Okay, so if you're doing an apple and black berry, but berry, if you're doing an apple and blackberry crumble, you just want to have one fairly even layer of apple at the bottom of your dish, and then we're going to sprinkle over some blackberries. Luckily, I foraged and froze quite a lot this year. I always wish I'd done even more though. Um, so I'm just going to take a few handfuls. Doesn't matter that they're frozen. This is just going to sit in the fridge with the crumble on top until we are ready to enjoy it later. The next step is to add the cinnamon sugar. I've actually got some cinnamon sugar that I made the other day for my pumpkin cinnamon rolls, but I don't think that's going to be quite enough. So you want a tablespoon of brown sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon, all mixed together, and then really mix so that all of these pieces in here are coated in your cinnamon sugar. And then the next thing to do is make the crumble, which is also very, very easy. Only three ingredients. Plain flour, I'm gonna use 160 grams. 115 grams of chilled butter, very important that it is cold straight from the fridge. Um, you should use unsalted, but we don't have any, so I'm gonna use salted, I'm sure it'll be the same. 80 grams of the same brown sugar that you popped on your apple and blackberry mix earlier. If you don't have a thermomix, mix, you can of course mix it with your hands, just kind of making a bit of a crumble with by breaking the butter up. Um, but of course, if you have got a thermomix, mix, then I do around 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds on speed five, just keeping an eye on it because if you mix it too much, then it could turn into a pastry. Okay, and now I'm just going to press this very lightly down with the back of a fork, just so that we don't have any peaks which could get burnt in the oven. I think I used slightly too much butter here. Could have done with a tiny bit more sugar and flour, but never mind. I love to finish my crumble with a good sprinkling of oats. 
just for that extra crunch on top. And now the best thing is, this is now ready to just sit and wait to be baked a little bit later on. I'd recommend leaving in a cool room, but probably not in the fridge. You probably need the fridge space for something else, and it can make it go a little bit soggy. I'm just going to lay the table and then start getting myself ready. Okay, so I want to make some little autumnal posy flower vases for the table and after literally two months of this bouquet being in our windowsill in the living room I'm going to do a little rejig, probably going to order a fresh one next week but I'd really like to try adding some hydrangeas into our Christmas tree this year so I'm going to save these um, but these lovely bits have dried out perfectly we've got the preserved leaves, we've got the poppy heads oh someone's dog is having a Sunday morning howl um, but yes this bouquet we literally just snipped the ends and popped it in water when it first arrived I think it must have been seven or eight weeks ago and have not touched it since everything has dried out so perfectly but because I want to get a fresh one and have some posy glasses on the table I'm finally going to give it a little bit of a rejig with roast prep we are doing well mm -hmm. we've got the potatoes peeled this yep. is my new favorite way of doing the carrots and parsnips okay so basically we all i always like the skin yeah but we scrub our parsnips and carrots don't we so we mm -hmm. actually don't peel them a that saves time yeah i mean it is quicker to scrub them with a brush than it is peeling definitely and you don't lose all of that goodness here mm. and then I give them a little coat of olive oil after cutting them you cut them a little bit like you would with a roast potato in that you want lots of angles yeah so that actually area. that's kind of the best job of parsley because you've got these angles and they'll go crispy lovely then you mix honey um, whole grain mustard and a bit of olive oil in a bowl oh, yummy um, you could use maple syrup mm -hmm. and then you get it over the carrots and parsnips mm -hmm. now the beauty of this I I've not done it the day before, but for when it comes to Christmas, I have, when I saw this recipe on YouTube, I know it was some random YouTuber, I can't remember her name, like a sort of Mary Berry-esque character. Ina Garten? No, she's not, she's no one prominent. Oh. Um, but basically she says I'll do it the night before, before Christmas. But I think it's that quick and easy you can do it the, the morning of Christmas. Yeah. But you want them to sit in the juices for a couple of hours, I think. Mm -hmm. And really, it's that straightforward, then the key thing, the key bit, which I went wrong on the first time, is the pan that you're cooking them in. Mm. You want it to be a proper roasting pan, like you would a roast potato. Yeah. And you want to get it in the agar or in the oven in advance for like 20 minutes. It needs to be roasting hot. So oh, the when pan. you put these in, mm. it goes and they're straight away caramelising. Okay. Otherwise, it, they don't go quite as crispy and as, as lovely. Mm. Um, lovely. I think the nice thing about this is... Growing up, my mum used to do lots of veg, yep. and my mum's roasts are amazing, but what I always noticed is the amount of pots and pans and almost stress required to do like three or four lots of veg. Mm -hmm. So the, my perfect roast now, and obviously we mix it up based on what seasonal and what meat we're having, mm. this will work really well with beef, uh, with the whole grain. Yep. I wouldn't necessarily do them like this if we were having chicken or pork. But what I've noticed... Oh, I think with chicken that'd be nice. Maybe, but maybe. I'd maybe try them in a different in a different way. Mm -hmm. But what's nice is we've got carrots and parsnips in here. That's two veg in one dish. We've got broccoli and cauliflower in the cauliflower cheese. That's two veg in one dish. Mm -hmm. And then, and the roast potatoes. So then, that is actually enough. Yeah. Plus the gravy, plus the Yorkshire puddings. Yeah. But then if you've got like maybe six or eight of you, we've got six people today... You can then just do something a little bit different. So we've got sprouts today with a bit of bacon. Mm. But you could just do like, you know... I wonder how many of our guests today will be brave enough to have a sprout. I mean, <laughs> they're something that they're super good for you. Mm -hmm. But they're also... I just think that they're, they're, when they're cooked properly, they're lovely. They're like... I feel like my nan, who is amazing, but her generation would steam everything within an inch of their life. And, and then they have, they have no, no flavour. Yeah. No spices. All the goodness goes away in the water. Yep. It's a bit like when you steam broccoli. Mm. If you if you have too much water, the water's green. That's like yeah, the that's goodness, the goodness that's in the broccoli. It's a shame it comes in plastic, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
I know it's because I had to go to m &S this week. I didn't go to um, farmer's the market. farm shop. That's but annoying. I could have got some yesterday. Never mind. So what else do you have to do? Cauliflower, broccoli, cheese, spruits, yeah. so, roasties and yeah, carrots. So the roasties are just going to sit in the water. Once again, they can be done as and when. Yep. Because when we have friends over like this, we're often like... Want to chat. Loosely, let's have lunch around two-ish. Yeah. But basically, they'll arrive, we'll have coffee, and then we'll work out when everyone's wanting food, and then mm -hmm. we'll get the roasties in straight away, if, mm -hmm. if it's soon. And the so beef Wellington. Nice. Robin Back, has Robin's ordered... Robin's bringing a beef Wellington today, yeah, which yeah. is exciting. Um, I have made beef Wellington a couple of times when we lived in London. Mm. It is one of those things where I would just rather re buy a really good one from a butcher's, because yeah. it's a lot of effort, isn't it? Yeah. Um, she so actually sort of cheating. She actually got it online from somewhere called like the Edinburgh... Edinburgh something or other, so okay. if it's good, we'll recommend it and leave it down below. So these will go in the fridge. Yesterday mm -hmm. was a really rainy, miserable day, so I just thought, well, I'll make the gravy yesterday, yep. and I had the cricket on, so it's the cricket one cup, so I had that and then the rugby on. So I'll just show you the gravy, because that's just been in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Got two of these, we've probably got too much gravy, but I made that yesterday. Because we're having a beef wellington, we don't need a trivet with the beef wellington. Mm -hmm. So it made sense to make the gravy separately. So you basically make it in the same way. You have the trivet, but you don't have the meat from the, ju uh, the juices from the meat. So mm -hmm. I just put a bit of bacon in there to add a Ooh, little bit of flavor. Yum. But um, for Christmas, we would normally make the gravy the day before yep. and use like chicken wings, like cheap bits of chicken to Ooh. give it the flavor. Nice. So you don't have to make gravy on Christmas day. And then we've also got the Yorkshire batter, which I made yesterday as well. Perfect. So that should save a lot of time. Yep. These glass bottles that our milk comes in are super handy for that. Mm. Got dairy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so actually there's a lot done really. The, yeah. the key thing is going to be making the cauliflower cheese now. Yep. And then and then we're good to go and then we can just sit and relax. Fantastic. Boom. Thanks for all your help, Dexy. You've been You've been exceptionally useful this morning. Couldn't have done anything without your wise onlooking. He's actually been a bit poorly this morning. He's been very needy looking up at mum and daddy with his flirtatious eyes. I'm a very good project manager. We adore you. I'm a very good project manager. Very good project manager. I'll have a kiss please daddy on the tip of my snoot. Daddy. I'll kiss you Dexy. I'll kiss you. Goodness. So a lot to catch up on. Last night we went to the farmhouse for their fireworks evening. It was manic. I have mentioned it a lot recently, but Soho Farmhouse honestly is just getting so busy lately. Um, and last night, I think they had organised five car parks. There were over 2,000 people that went <laughs> to the fireworks last night, and it seemed like everyone drove in their own car. We should have thought ahead, and we should have shared a lift with Ben and Robin, but there were queues down the lanes. There was, um, like, fields and fields of car parks all just getting completely full. And if you've ever been, you'll know that it's, like, one really narrow <laughs> country lane to get into the farmhouse. They had organised coaches <laughs> to take people from the car park into the farmhouse. To be fair, it was very well organised, but it was still <laughs> absolutely crazy and pouring with rain. But it was so worth it. We got down there. Um, there was the Ferris wheel again, the fairground rides, which we didn't go on because Robin is now seven months pregnant and with twins. Um, so we didn't think that was quite the right thing to do, but we had some yummy food. We obviously watched the fireworks, which was so lovely. We bumped into loads of friends and then we made a really good call actually. We decided to go, we'd already booked to have dinner at the Boxing Hair, which if you guys go to the farmhouse or our kind of neck of the woods. The Boxing Hair is a really, really nice pub. The owners and all the staff are so, so friendly. Um, <laughs> she was trying to ply us with bottles of wine at the end and we were like, no, we're not really drinking. Um, <laughs> so she gave us bottles of Blenheim Forge water as we left. Just such a, such a friendly team and delicious food. Literally four minutes from Soho Farmhouse, 15 minutes from our house here. And it was lovely, really nice evening. Today we have got um, Sunday roast with six friends, no, four friends, so six of us in total. So I've been getting ready for that all morning with rollers in my hair. Haven't been prepared to talk to the camera before now because some people look cool and glamorous when they have rollers in their hair. I look like... Is there a character in The Simpsons, like this bonkers lady <laughs> that wears a dressing gown and has rollers? Or have I completely imagined that? But I feel a bit like bonkers um, and I look, I look very peculiar <laughs> when I've got rollers in my hair. And now I've just come upstairs to get ready. I've just let the curls out. They actually look quite 
voluminous and fab this morning. Hopefully they will last. I know they won't because my hair is just not lasting at the moment. And as you might be able to tell, I have got a serious amount of boxes behind me. And within these boxes, it is without a shadow of a doubt, the most exciting online order that I have ever made. One of these items in particular, I've had on my wish list for a really long time, but have always in the bottom of my heart been like, they're so, so expensive for what they are and couldn't bring myself to buy one until I found the perfect one. I think I may have the perfect one here. I'm sure a lot of you already know what I'm talking about, or maybe I've already put it in the thumbnail. Basically, I placed a very large Dior order. It is gonna be my birthday in 11 days <laughs> by the time you're watching this. So this is 100% my birthday and Christmas gift to myself <laughs> combined. Very extravagant, extremely extravagant. Aside from the watch <laughs> last year, I have never spoiled myself quite this much and um, not gonna lie, it does feel a little bit weird doing this kind of level of unboxing on YouTube. I've certainly never done it before, so definitely prepared for some people to be like, Josie, not appropriate. Um, but, so if you do feel that way, <laughs> feel free to skip the next few minutes. I'm actually not gonna unbox it right now because our guests could be, and I think they will be quite punctual today, arriving in 40 minutes. So I'm gonna whiz downstairs and do a little tidy, I just need to vacuum clean, help Charlie probably empty a dishwasher by now. So I'm gonna do those last minute bits, and if I've got time, fingers crossed, I want to open at least one of these boxes with you now. So I'll go and get cracking. Oh, something is starting to smell very good in the kitchen. Hello, darling. Do you urgently need me to help you with something or can I spend 15 minutes just doing my Dior unboxing? No, that's fine, you can do that. Okay, okie dokie. I'll be down in 15 to do those last bits. Well, great news. <laughs> They're gonna be a little bit late. So, let's do a little bit of unboxing. I've never been this excited to unboxings and this has been teasing me, this pile has been teasing me for the last couple of days. I thought about doing some TikToks to unbox, but I can only imagine the hate <laughs> that I would get there. I think you guys are a lot more friendly than TikToks, so <sighs> I'm gonna do my birthday unboxing in the safety of my YouTube friends. <laughs> this is kind of my version of what I got for my birthday <laughs> video, but it's what I am ridiculously treating myself to <laughs> for my birthday. So I did and do this box because they don't have any branding on the outside of the box. So I didn't actually know that these were the Dior pieces. So this one has been undone, and but this is my first time opening it. So inside, oh my gosh, it is just so beautiful. Can you imagine? I bet some people come down on Christmas morning and see boxes like this under their tree. <gasps> what a beauty, what an absolute beauty. So, this is so special. All right, let's undo this beautiful but button. Bow. The first time I've ever ordered from Dior online, um, I got my Dior coat from Bista and I bought my bracelet. Where is it? It's downstairs somewhere by the sink. I bought the bracelet from the Dior store in the Heathrow Airport with Freddie and I did buy my gardening apron um, from the Dior boutique on Bond Street and all of which have been really lovely shopping experiences but yes I thought I would try out Dior online. This kind of reminds me of Ladere packaging, both lovely French brands. <laughs> Such an experience, oh my goodness. And then we have got the little dust bag in here. And in the dust bag, I really hope this fits. Although I did text a friend who is a regular Dior shopper and she said that their returns process is quite easy. And here we have my first item and it is a belt. It's obviously got a plastic label on it. It's actually pink on one side and taupe on the other. We all know how much I love a pretty, well no, let's try the size before I take the label off. I love a multi-use product. I did purposely put this dress on in the hope that it would fit. So, oh, it looks like it will. Okay, I'm just gonna be really brave, really bold, and take this label off. Um, hmm, lots of labels and plastic going on here. I think they did have this in a brown, but I thought I have got quite a few brown belts. Little Christian Dior leather coupon tag there. I wonder what I could use that for, because it's far too bougie to throw away. So, got quite a lot of holes which is great 
because then, oh, I think I've got it upside down. Hang on, no. I think it's actually can be worn both ways up. So this dress has got like a little elasticated section, which is wonderful. Yes. And, okay, well, with this particular dress, <laughs> but if it was a dress that you could actually see my belt, that would be wonderful. I'm just gonna go and look in the mirror. Okay, I love it. Even though you can't see it with this dress, I'm already confident that I'm going to keep it. So we're going to do the snip. The snip. And by the way, there are seven boxes there, or six boxes. One thing is a duplicate that I ordered in two sizes, and um, I'm probably not going to keep everything. Well, definitely not going to keep everything. So that's why I ordered it so far ahead of my birthday, so that I could decide what I was going to keep by then. Goodness me, what have I done? I guess I could do some kind of tuck so that it's visible. And of course I will be keeping all of these bougie little bags just for prosperity. Do you know what actually inspired this entire order, aside from the fact that these things had been on my wish list for a while, was actually this makeup collection. I thought, gosh, if that is the vibe that they're going down with their makeup, then hopefully they will finally have the bag um, that I have been hoping that they would bring out. Ooh, I'm excited to get to that. Okay, so I can throw away all of this, keep things tidy. So from now on, aside from the big one at the bottom, I actually don't know which is gonna be in each of the boxes because they're all very similar size. So this could be the main gift. This could be one of the pairs of shoes. So once again, we have got the beautiful Dior boxes. Do you know what? I'm even gonna keep <laughs> these envelopes because they are so gorgeous. Oh, it's literally just like a business card. Oh, that's your receipt. Cute. Very, very cute. The loveliest shoe box. I have never owned a pair of Dior shoes before. This is a real, a real first for me. But one of my friends um, says that one of her most comfortable pairs of shoes is a Dior, is a Dior pair. There are three pairs of shoes in my haul. Um, two of which are the same but different sizes. Another lovely bag. Care card. Tissue. <gasps> wow. Size. I was asking my friend Victoria about the sizing for Dior and she said that she actually sizes down. So these are a 35 and a half, while I normally take a 36. So I just think they are stunning. I do have to consider, however, my stunning, fabulous, absolute favorite new Manolos. So these have to be really quite sensational and very comfortable in order for me to keep them because of course they are very expensive. The detail is just beautiful. I love the color. I love that they kind of look like an antique rug. <laughs> um, and then you've got the Dior up there, not a ridiculously high heel. I just hope that my foot will stay in them. That is my main concern, I will not lie. Obviously the outfit that I'm wearing now is not really appropriate with these shoes, maybe it is. If my friends are really late, <laughs> then I'll try these on. But if not, um, maybe I will insert some clips over the top and <gasps> let me know what you think. I think Dior has a 28 day return policy, so I will absolutely wait for this video to go live and check the comments and your opinions um, before I send anything back or, aside from the belt, because <laughs> I snip the label, decide what I'm going to be keeping. There's a 50-50% chance that this will be the exact same pair of shoes in a different size. I think we might be in luck. I think this might be the other pair of shoes. They certainly look different from the pictures. So again, I love that we are actually saving the best two pieces till last. What do you guys do with your dust bags? Aside from packing shoes and underwear <laughs> when you travel. I've got a tough decision which pair of shoes to keep. Oh my gosh, they do look quite big actually. So this is my normal size, size 36. Can you tell I'm loving green shoes right now? Pointed toe. These could be a lovely way of elevating trousers. Not that I wear trousers <laughs> very often, but I need to try wearing them more. I like the fact that the Dior ribbon, the Dior ribbon on these is green and white. I think that is lovely kind of like a ribbed fabric, and a lower heel. I probably would have preferred 
a higher heel. If they, I will keep a lookout if they bring these out with a higher heel, higher heel, higher heel. But love them. Love that the heel is green, whereas the heel on the others is black. I would say the first pair obviously are a bit more dressy. They have got um, more kind of gold shimmery tones in them. Obviously a higher heel. Wasn't planning on keeping both. I think I'm leaning towards these, but I'd love your opinions, darlings. Do you prefer pair one or pair two? Let me know. I think this is the main, the main event. Yes, this is different. Okay. It looks like this inside. If I didn't know what it was, I would have thought this was their advent calendar. Let's open this together. So we open the little Dior door. Is this open too? Yes. How fun. What can I use this box for, box for afterwards? Tissue paper. I could have a little cry right now. <laughs> okay, my darlings, are you ready? I just saw the pattern. I just saw the pattern. goodness me oh my goodness me oh oh wow <sighs> just want to give it a little bit of a cuddle actually just give me a moment that's beautiful that is beautiful so my darlings here she is the main event that is adorable I have been on the lookout for a very long time for an elevated everyday handbag that's not a ginormous handbag because I am a ginormous handbag kind of gal which you will see more evidence of in a moment. Uh, is this a Lady Dior? Possibly, I don't know. I really don't know the names of things. Does it say on the box? I will pop the correct name of this um, on the screen here. Maybe it'll tell me in this little booklet. Oh! get a Dior credit card with your order. Probably authenticity, isn't it? Um, yeah, still no idea what this bag is called, but this is the bag. My friend Robin, who you saw last night and who's coming again in half an hour, has got a bag like this, either a Lady Dior or whatever this is. Um, Size-wise, I've played around with it and I'm always so amazed with how much stuff she gets in it, which for me is very, very important because I love carrying a lot of stuff and I'm not willing to sacrifice that for a cute little bag but to me this felt like the perfect size so inside you can see it feels quite safe jolly good with this um it's got like a fabric overlay so I can pull that up I'm gonna have to be so careful to clean my hands because there's a lot of white on here and we've got a chunky strap which is beautiful oh oh nice depending on if I want to go full floral or in your face branding I will probably go full floral so you can wear it clipped over but where do you clip it onto I think you have to clip it onto these which is a bit of a pain um and then inside roomy you've got a little there is a zip pocket and a an envelope pocket in there I have the biggest iPhone so for size comparison you know it's a pretty good size but equally I feel that it's going to still look chic and delicate and could also because it's fabric I feel that it could work for a day bag Ooh. and an evening bag what do you think it does fit over my wrist which is great I'm just gonna have a look in the mirror again what's in here oh is this gonna be some dangly charms Oh, how cute! Dangly Dior. What do you guys think? Oh, it is so beautiful. So beautiful. So, this is another little close-up. You have got the most stunning... You can see why this is the one that I felt was worth waiting for because of the floral embroidery. There's quite a lot of black on here, which for me is quite bold, um, but wait till you see the next thing, which I think I'm going to have to wait till, I'm, till later to unbox. <laughs> I think you can probably tell from my expression at the time, a little bit in love. I think it's gorgeous. Such a perfect size for me. The fact that I can wear... Yeah, it's a little bit peculiar that the straps go on here. I would have quite liked them to have been 
on the edge, I think. And the hardware is pewter. Yeah, that feels a bit weird. But I guess once it's on, love that you can be hands-free. I think it is too much with the belt, but hands-free. Is there a different way of wearing the cross strap? I'm not sure, but then you do have easy access. You can just open your flap <laughs> and get your bits and bobs out. These are the Dior charms, which I will unpackage after I open the next bag because that will be the deciding factor. Well, I feel like those pieces alone would just be the most insane Dior haul ever. Um, but as you can see, there is still a box there. And I'm probably most 50-50 about that item because of the color of it. Um, but it is 11.40. Even though I've been told our guests are gonna be late, I would just feel too anxious <laughs> unboxing that knowing that they could arrive any second. So I'm gonna tidy up these boxes, go and do my last like dash around of tidying downstairs um, and We'll unbox that one together a little bit later. Okay, all fairly calm down here. Some washing up for me to do. We've got the breadcrumbs, which Charlie always does far too many of. Oh my goodness, that's practically a side dish of breadcrumbs, not just front top of the cauliflower cheese. We've got the herbs, the broccoli ready to be blitzed, the cheese. Ooh, and fresh off the boil. Well, how lucky are we? Just as our guests are about to arrive, we've got blue skies. Crabapple arch is looking stunning. Low winter sunshine. And I'm just going to quickly fill up this vase with some herbaceous border blooms to pop in our bedroom. Sometimes they will like um, bring some more out later. These yeah. definitely go with the bag more because they've got the black. So true. And the bag actually doesn't have much green in it. No, but it, yeah. I still think it goes because we do have like the little. Yeah. Little, oh yeah, that's true. The little bits. I just love that this is green in this one. I do love that as well. It's yeah, they're. If they came out, I'd I'd say keep them if they were the higher heel. Yeah. But I just got your black one. Yeah, they're, so not, they're, they're just they're that high. They're that high. Yeah. I've got a pair in this height and I never wear them. Interesting. So them. Okay, interesting. And are they your normal size or are they a size smaller? So, smaller for the fabric ones and okay. then the leather ones are really tight so like size up. Interesting. So the fabric a little bit smaller. Are they you they, they are a half size smaller, but I've not tried one yet. I think a half size would be perfect. Good. Which is why I actually did buy them as well in my correct size. Um, Honestly, that is just amazing. Mm -hmm. What is it? I'm intrigued. Oh, it's like the size of it. I've wanted one of these for so long. Okay. I, I know what it is. Okay. I think yeah. that's it's stupidly <laughs> overpriced. I know what it is. It's material. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I also was waiting for one that was a practical color, but also a color that I loved. And I wish it was this pattern. Yeah. Um, but this is the only color doing the botanical the, the flowers. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what a giant game. Oh my gosh. Oh, and it's like an advent yeah. calendar. Oh. Mm. Take that off. Get ready. Get away. Oh, it's so much fun unboxing with friends. Yeah. I'm loving this. It's like a. You need to hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it, up yeah. <laughs> it is like an advent calendar. <laughs> when is your birthday? Mm. 20... No, 18 days? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow, drop the box. So, really unusual colour choice for me. Because it's Ooh. black. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's That's so beautiful. nice. I thought it'd be quite practical. Yeah, because it's darker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It almost looks like 
the darkest navy. Like That's the so coral true. makes it look yeah. less pure black. Yeah, which I think is really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it bit. softens. It's it. a very view pattern. Is it the same as if but yes. inverted? Yeah, yeah, it is. Embroidery, it? Oh, embroidery just the, the, the display of oh, these. Oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I thought so if I because this would be like airport bag, yeah, 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 yeah. So I can have that as my crossbody, mm -hmm. and this is my. Because you know what it's like, you stick it on the floor, so I didn't want something. You don't want something too light. That's what I've always thought about those bags like they're so prone to just getting filthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's definitely. after a really wonderful afternoon with friends. They have just left. Everyone tried to leave about an hour ago, but we had a van um, broken down on the corner of our lane so no one could get out. So the three boys have been busy help <laughs> helping this guy to get his van out. Luckily, we could squeeze one of the defenders past the van. And I think the boys ended up using a chain a battle rope <laughs> and a pair of secateurs to get the van out of where he was stuck. So that sounds like they've had a very, very interesting um, hour while the girls had a little catch up in the kitchen, but it's been a really, really wonderful afternoon. A great roast, delicious beef wellington, um, and as you saw, the girls came up here for me to unbox the Dior book tote, which is in a colour very unlike me, very dark, but I just am so in love with the floral embroidery that I thought that it was 
it was the one for me. Also, these bags, they do get, you know, put on the floor and I, I plan, I'm not the kind of person that saves things for best. I really like to use my precious things. So it'll come on train journeys, it'll, it'll get, you know, it'll be my travel bag. So I did want a practical color. I think if I spray this one with liquid proof, then hopefully the top handles shouldn't get any marks on them. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think I will get use out of the black? I think they look really, really lovely together. The girls both agreed that they thought that I would get much more use out of this pair of shoes, especially because of the heel height of these and I guess the similarity to the Manolos but yeah it is rather beautiful so my darlings we have got a little bit of washing up to do so I think I'm going to end the vlog here thank you so much for watching I will see you in the next one